You are listening to the Free to Be Mindful podcast, which provides bite-sized tips for busy parents, educators, and anyone working with kids. These real talk conversations focus on mindful living, mental health, and personal growth, helping all to learn, grow, and inspire with mindfulness in mind. I'm your host, Vanessa De Jesus Guzman, educator, licensed professional counselor, entrepreneur, and mom. I'm passionate about helping folks live life with peace of mind and ease of heart while not losing their, well, you know, here we go. Have you ever tried to practice meditation, but have no idea if it's working or even if you're doing it right? Wouldn't it be awesome if there was something to let you know when you're in the zone to let you know to do more of that? Well, there is something that does exactly that. It's called Muse. Muse is a brain sensing headband that helps you find more calm, sharper focus, and better sleep. It does this by measuring your brain waves and lets you know exactly when you're in a meditative state. It's an awesome tool for kids and for adults alike. You can get 15% off any Muse product by clicking the link in the show notes below. Check them out at choosemuse.com. And again, don't forget to use that link for 15% discount at checkout. Hi, and welcome back. I'd like to take a moment and thank listener Mrs. Villa 710, who left a review of the podcast. She stated, Vanessa has a perfect voice for a soothing podcast experience. I love listening to her talk and share her wisdom. Well, Mrs. Villa, I greatly appreciate you for that very kind compliment. And thank you so much for listening. I truly value your support. This episode is airing in the second half of February, 2021. And if you weren't aware on the calendar this year, February is actually a perfect square. Meaning that if your calendar starts with Monday and ends with Sunday, the dates on the calendar make a perfect square. And believe it or not, this only happens about once every 200 years. (laughs) Food for thought, right? Some would look at this and say, oh, how cool. And others look at it and think, perfection, a perfect square on the calendar. Is that you, I wonder? Well, perfection is something some of us strive for each and every day. And for some of us, everything needs to be in its place, from our household to our work output to our appearance. Everything needs to be just so. Others can let go of that perfection, but still strive high. Or they can just be hyper-focused on perfection in just one area or two, and not every area of their lives. Perhaps you feel like you have to have the perfect looking home. Or perhaps every hair on your head and brush of makeup has to be perfectly intact. Or... Maybe you have to be perfectly put together from head to toe, or maybe your kids have to look perfect, or you want to appear perfect at your job. The list is endless. But we must ask ourselves, where do all these efforts lead to? Do they really ever lead to perfection? And if they do, at what cost? The idea of striving for perfection is a double-edged sword of sorts. It can motivate us to strive higher, but it can also cause unnecessary anxiety if it gets out of hand. So for example, striving the best always reminds me of Kobe Bryant and his Mamba mentality. He once said, we can always be kind of average, but I'm not in this to do what's normal. So striving higher may entail working harder and working past the average. And the goal of this message isn't for us to settle for less or to be okay with being average. But what it's really about is to ask ourselves what is most important to us and at what cost. 
Because if it costs you your mental health, we must ask ourselves, is it really worth it? And for some things, my friends, it may be, but we can prioritize what those things are. So for example, having the perfectly clean and organized home, having the perfect hair, the airbrush makeup, the amazing outfit, all wonderful things to have. However, what good is this perfect home if your kids are miserable? And what good is a perfect appearance if you're unhappy? Only we define what perfection really means for ourselves. And maybe perfection for you looks like a sink full of dishes and clean laundry on top of your bed that you haven't put away yet. But it means you're fully content with your career and with the relationship with your partner. Or maybe for someone else, maybe perfection looks like leaving work on time while everyone else is staying. But it means you get to make dinner for your kids and put them to bed. So ask yourself, can you really live up to your expectations and still be perfect? Or is it okay to let one area go to achieve perfection in another? Another perspective on the topic of perfection is, is it really fair to us to always put so much emphasis on the end product or can we take the time to enjoy the journey? Just recently this week, a friend from college posted pictures of the summer we entered the EOF program and other pictures from early on in our college careers. And first, I was stunned that that was almost 21 years ago, <laughs> which is insane. But as I looked at the 18-year-old version of myself, a skinny, geeky-looking girl with glasses and long curly hair, I thought to myself, man, I wish I would have paid more attention to the small moments that I was living then. Throughout our lives, we seem to be working towards a goal of success. We do well in elementary school to do well in middle school. We do well in middle school to have honors classes in high school. We do well in high school in preparation for college. We do well in college to get a good job. And then we work hard at work for promotions. But then what? And again, at what cost? Are we letting our lives slip by without appreciating the small stuff? Are we appreciating the progress we make at each step of our lives? Can we put progress over perfection? So right now, regardless of where you are or what you're doing, bring awareness to your body in the space you're in. And whether you're sitting or standing, see if you feel tightness or a scrunchy feeling in your neck or in your back. Take a few moments to roll the heads of your shoulders back a few times and bring the awareness now to your spine and the muscles in your back and in your shoulders. Is there anything that's pulling, that feels funny, that feels tight? With awareness, take a deep breath in and breathe comfort into that space. Now bring your attention to your face and release your tongue from the roof of your mouth Loosen your jaw and let that space breathe. We often hold a lot of tension there without noticing, and we hold a lot of tension in the rest of our face. Bring your awareness to the top part of your face, to the space between your eyes, to your eyebrows, and loosen that area as you take breaths in and out. Perhaps move your eyebrows up and down until you feel the tension is released. Now shift gears 
and bring awareness to the roles that you play in your life. Parents, educator, caregiver, therapist, and so on. We wear so many masks in our day to day. Think of the one role that you give your highest level of attention to, the role where you seek the most perfection. And take a moment to reflect, why is it so important to you? Think of the area that is a have to for you. Connect it to why. And now think of other areas where you can just let things go. As we continue living and as we continue reaching our goals, as we continue working hard, let's focus on one to two areas of working hard. And then let's make a concerted effort to focus on the small stuff. Focus on the buds slowly beginning to appear on the trees. Focus on your pet's habits. Focus on your children's smiles. Focus on the lovely moments between you and a partner or you and a friend. Focus on the stories. Focus on all of the small stuff. For that is truly what is most important. Continue to offer yourself compassion for not being able to be everything for everyone and allow yourself grace and the space to reach your expectations, but to be okay with all the rest. Have a great week. I hope you enjoyed this week's show. It would mean a ton if you took this moment to review the Free To Be Mindful podcast on the platform you catch your favorite shows. That quick and easy act lets me know what you enjoy and it helps others find the podcast too. And of course, don't forget to subscribe so you can listen along next week. In the meantime, I welcome you to catch me on social media at Counselor V De Jesus. And as always, remember, in a world where you are free to be anything that you want to be, you are always free to be mindful. Catch you next week.